to them. Okay. Yep. Great. Well, welcome to the Window into Paris live webcast um, from Paris. Um, my name is Megan, and I am the programs coordinator at Climate Generation, a little Steger legacy. And we are a nonprofit in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And our mission is to educate and empower people to engage in solutions to climate change. So we see that um, educators are critical messengers of climate and energy literacy for hundreds of students each year, just like you guys here in uh, North Carolina. And so we are leading a group of 10 educators. They're called Education Ambassadors in our Window into Paris program. Um, and they are now at the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change 21st Conference of the Parties. So it's COP21 for short, uh, and they're in Paris, France this week. So these teachers are engaging in the international climate negotiations as both learners and communicators back to their classrooms and their communities. So they represent diverse subject areas, grade levels, and educational settings from around the entire country. Um, and this year's negotiations will, for the first time in over 20 years, um, have the goal to achieve a legally binding and universal climate agreement with the aim of keeping global warming below 2 degrees Celsius. So that's what the... Oh, they we just lost them. Lost. Um, but that's what the negotiations are. Let's see if they can come back. Oh, there we go. We got them. Oh, good. You guys are back. Awesome. Okay, so I was just saying that the goal is to keep the global warming of the entire Earth below 2 degrees Celsius. So that's what we're trying to decide in Paris this week. Um, and today we have Mrs. Boziak um, live from Paris. She is going to um, talk to you today about what she's been up to with these negotiations and all the side events that they have been doing. And thanks for joining us from Lincolnton High School in North Carolina there on the Hangout as well. So um, I'm going to turn it over to you for now if you want right. to give us a little rundown of what you've been up to. Sounds good. Let me, um, how you guys been? Good? Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Nick, I can see you right in the front, and let's see, who else is right in the front? Tons of people right in the front. Awesome, awesome. Um, I'm going to start out with just kind of giving a shout-out to all the folks that made it so I could come, um, and that's you guys and Climate Generation and everybody else and, and everybody that's put up with me while I'm here. I'm going to give you a little bit of what we've done sort of day by day, um, and then I'm going to let you guys ask questions at the end. So just kind of bear with me. Let me make sure that this little PowerPoint, I'm going to lose you. You're going to, you're going to see my PowerPoint, but I'm not going to see you until I come back. So just hang on a second. All right. So here we go. Okay. So right now we are at what's called COP21, and um, Megan gave you sort of an overview of what that was all about. This is the logo, which is kind of cool. It's, uh, it's pretty impressive. It's just about everywhere that you can see. So... All right, so any of you that know me know that that's how I start my morning out. Um, bonjour is how you say good morning if you're here in France and you know that I've got to have my coffee. So I thought that that would be very appropriate to show you that, that I'm still having my coffee while I'm here. Um, for the earth science kids, and I did notice that there were some of the anatomy kids that were in there, uh, here's your weather data from Paris. You don't have to write it down, but I just kind of wanted you to see the types of weather that I'm, I'm seeing. It's about 50 degrees. It's kind of overcast, uh, a little bit of wind, a little bit of rain last night. In fact, a lot of rain last night. So the pressure is rising. So that means it's going to be a nice sunny day today and tomorrow. But it's pretty humid, which means it feels a little damper than it is. And uh, there were no contrails. So we, uh, we had kind of a, a very pleasant day. All right. When I first got here and I started walking around in the airport and, and in the train station, and I rode everywhere in the train station, um, it was really obvious that there was something serious going down here. And if you, I know you don't read French, but basically what these, these really giant billboards are talking about is the fact that, you know, this is our world and this is our climate 
that we need to take care of both and we need to make sure that it's suitable for everybody. Um, this was really kind of cool, this one up here in the corner. That's what I ran into immediately when I got off the uh, got off the airplane. So I sort of felt like I was being welcomed even though I was just a citizen participant. Um, I made it to my hotel and this is the type of, of scenery that's outside my hotel and I thought it was kind of appropriate and, and really rather cool that this little old gentleman was gardening in the in the middle of Paris right behind my hotel and he was very meticulous about what he was doing and he was very careful with what he was doing so very very proud of what was going on um, this is kind of dangerous I put the put this one here because this is a, a crosswalk you don't walk if you're not in the crosswalk because you will get run over this is a circular uh, intersection and the cars go around it just like you guys see in the movies Okay, so this is the bunch that we're with. Look at that face. Isn't that fabulous? And yes, Austin, I still have the same smile. It's I can't lose it. It just doesn't want to go away. Um, so these are some of the folks that I am uh, working with and going around and, and going to some of the events with. The very first day that we got here, um, we had a little bit of time because the conference hadn't actually started. So I know some of you were very concerned about the events that had gone on a couple of weeks ago and so we went down to one of the memorials um, and this is in in one of the plazas and you can see that it's just surrounded with flowers and it's surrounded with candles and some of the people are are very particular about what they do like this particular gentleman his I don't know whether it was a job that somebody had given him or a job that he took on himself but he literally walked around and relit all candles that um, had blown out and so he was there for quite a long time doing that this was one of the one of the emblems that you see all over this one particular area in it and it says in English um, Paris we love you okay so Sunday afternoon was the day that we really first got going and we had a lot of meetings in the morning um, just amongst ourselves and with some of the coordinators of the program but uh, anybody know who this is No, this is a this is a, a famous old actor, like old, older than you guys are. Um, but he's very very big in the environment, and so he was he was sort of like this really handsome dude, you know, when I was younger, and everybody fell all over themselves, sort of like uh, Leonardo DiCaprio now, or you know that Justin Bieber guy that I can't stand. Um, and so he was there, and his whole thing was the importance of talking about what's going on and telling stories and listening to stories and you guys know I always tell stories so that that was very interesting to me the folks that are in the middle um, and yes he is literally dressed that way and has a stick through his nose um, this is Mundai and he's from Papua New Guinea and he is a traditional chief um, and so he's very very proud of where he comes from but he's very upset about the fact that the forests are disappearing and so his lifestyle is not what it used to be and he's afraid for his students and afraid of his children and for his grandchildren these lovely ladies are um, both from island nations and so they're very concerned that with sea level rise which you guys know we've been talking about a lot and we were talking about a lot right before we came I came um, they're concerned that their islands are disappearing and their homes are disappearing so that was kind of a, a, a very um, very intense, very moving presentation that we got a chance to go see. Okay, so then we go to actually to the COP. And there's two sections to that. There's a blue zone and a green zone. And I wasn't lucky enough to get into the blue zone. The blue zone is where, you know, all like the high rollers and big players hang out. So if you wanted to see somebody like Al Gore or... Um, you know some of the some of the movie stars that are involved you know and listen to some of the really intense discussion about what should go into some of these agreements um, that's where you would go so I'm in the green zone and I get the opportunity to go and talk to a lot of people which which kind of is cooler than being in the blue zone really because you get to to meet the people that are being affected by some of the things that are going on and so to me that's more important you guys all know that I like to do that sort of thing a lot so this is what what we saw when we got up there and it's these great big huge columns and of course again you all know how tall I am so I'm probably about that tall right on those little dots 
Um, they're really, really big columns, and it's nothing but flags of all of the nations that are there. Um, this was the entrance going into the facility, which is kind of neat. Um, we had to stand in line for quite a long time, and so while we were standing in line, we were looking at some of the things that were around us. And this is a this is a tree that's uh, sort of functions as a wind vane, which means it collects all kinds of wind. By the way, you can see the contrails that are up here in the sky, you guys. I don't forget that you have to learn about weather. Um, and they were telling us that one little tree like this can collect enough power in a month to power a bus for a year, which is kind of cool. Um, this is a ribbon tree where all of the hopes and wishes of people dealing with climate, people were putting those all over the tree so that uh, other, other people could read them. So this is inside this is inside the complex and so this is what they call the green zone and we weren't like I said allowed to go into some of the other areas where the the more important folk were. Okay, so some of the folks that I got a chance to meet, remember I told you that I I really was trying to meet just sort of the common person, the people that climate change affects like you and me and everybody else. Um, this is a penguin. And yes, he's a penguin, and he sings like a penguin, and he walks like a penguin. And he was talking to us about some of the changes that are occurring in Antarctica and how his home is not going to be what it once was. This gentleman, um, you can see that we're matching because we both have on berets. And he is a student that's doing some work, um, some graduate level work. But he also described himself as an activist. And he said that he thought that it was very important for him to speak out to some of his friends who weren't quite so concerned and to some of his relatives that weren't quite so concerned about what's happening and what's, you know, things that need to happen. Uh, these gentlemen are indigenous people from Peru. And so what they're seeing is their whole mountain habitats are changing. And that's something that's going to be very difficult to get back. Some of you guys that know Cozy, Cozy went with me. He's he's now meeting um, an author, and I'm going to bring this book back so that you guys can see this book and and we'll look at it. It's a book that's written about climate change from the viewpoint of an ant, and how even even the insects world is changing. So um, that was kind of cool. And I, and again, I go after talking to the to the average person. We sang this this gentleman. Oh, I have to tell you, let me go back. I don't know if I can go back on this. Anyway, the, the, the gentleman that was from uh, from France, this young man, he told me that his name, you ready? He said his name is Michel Jordan. So if anybody's taking French in the audience, Michel stands for Michael. And Jordan, if you make it into English, is or Jordan, works out to be Jordan. So he was very happy that his name was Michael Jordan. And I was supposed to tell you guys that. Um, when we were getting ready to walk into the, um, the conference the very first day, and I put this up here so you guys could read it, this gentleman um, was walking through some of the columns with his friend here, and we had no idea who he was. And I walked up to him and I said, oh my gosh, you have such a fabulous smile. Thank you for making me smile today. And we got talking, and it turned out that he was the president of Mozambique. And his friend that he was walking with was one of the members of his parliament but here's the cool part about this guy he also makes pasta and he told me that he thought that that was pretty cool and so um, this is for Xavian and for Robert if they're sitting there check that out it says pretty smooth um, so the good and the bad of day one this is kind of a really cool thing. It's it's um it's a sphere that says today we are all citizens of the world, and this is a big mural that stretched for an entire wall, and everybody was painting things that were important to them about climate change on there. But then on the other side, you have protesters, and today, which you're not going to see anything on because the PowerPoint was made yesterday, but today there were huge, huge demonstrations in the green zone, and sit-ins and people you know, just really, really getting vocal about things that they thought were important. Okay, so day two. Um, day two was a little bit more, a little bit more intense. Um, we went to several sessions. Um, we got to pick and choose the ones that we wanted to go to, and so this one was on climate justice, and you guys know how I feel about 
native peoples and indigenous peoples and so this was talking about some of the things that are important to them with their countries either disappearing underwater or changing completely this group over here was a group that was talking about oceans and you would have been really really proud of me because they got talking and they started talking about all the things that you needed to learn and things that were important for education and um, so I got really really bold and so you would have been very proud of me because I spoke up about some of the things that you you all do in class and some of the things that are concerns for you and they were very very proud of the fact that you guys were interested okay so um, I told you that there were some protests this is this is not something that's ever gonna go smoothly because some people don't like what's happening and they don't understand that it's something that needs to be seriously considered so this is a group that was protesting um, the second day and you can see if you look in the center all of the signs were focused at the United States and their comments and their questions were what were we going to do about the United States the United States doesn't want to do any of these things that we think are important and so that's something that I want you guys to think about before I come back because that's something that we need to talk about you know are we looking at things the right way um, are we being too sort of tied up in our own little worlds they were very quiet they were not um, yelling or screaming at anybody so they were almost a silent protest unlike today today's was was pretty loud and pretty vocal um, so just a couple other little things that I've done because I know you guys are all going yeah right she didn't stay in that conference the whole time we know better than that so this is this is the Eiffel Tower um, and I've seen it a lot of times I've seen it at night I've seen it in the daytime I probably won't get a chance to go up to it because y'all know what I feel about ice and about icebergs and glaciers and so I'm gonna go see some pieces of ice that they've brought in from Greenland tomorrow and they've got them sitting in one of the one of the plazas and so hopefully I'll be able to get my picture taken with this really giant piece of ice but it is Christmas here and so you can see here's some Christmas decorations um, and some things that you know are going on this is what looks like graffiti something that you all would get in trouble for um, but it's it's a wall that they actually put up that allow people to put their comments about the climate out there so that others can read it okay a little bit there's the Eiffel Tower at night you can see we were we were um, we had to climb up to the top of a place called Montmartre up near Sacred Heart Sacre Coeur and uh, it was 250 steps straight up so we were kind of tired by the time we got up there and again a little bit of Christmas decorations there I am look at that awesome rocking the scene I'm telling you this is uh, Sacre Coeur and it's an it's an amazingly beautiful church inside um, they wouldn't let us take any pictures so I can't show you any pictures of the inside but just picture the prettiest church you've ever seen and then multiply it by probably a thousand and that'll give you an idea of what it's like a lot of the streets are these little teeny tiny streets that are all cobblestones so it's uh, it's very very old school which is kinda cool okay so here's the book that I'm gonna bring back cozy in his book um, and you notice he made some friends too so he got friendly with the penguin and the penguin told him that it was important climate change was important to be uh, not taken lightly for monkeys too so he was he was kinda happy that the penguin was talking to him I w I'm not gonna bring the book back in Spanish even though probably uh, I could talk Esperanza into reading it to us but I bring it back in English now I do want you and and I don't know who's got their phones with them I'm, I'm assuming probably most of you do so if you can see this is an address that I want you all to type into your phones not necessarily right at this minute but maybe Miss Roberson will stay with you um, and let you do it afterwards and each of these blocks is something that you do okay so for example um, and it's a game that you're gonna play so it's called let's let's play for cop 21 reduce your co2 emissions so it's kinda like the um, eco footprint that we were working on before I came but so for example um, I take I take less than three minutes worth of shower and if you think that that's something that you do you would click on it and then it would show how much carbon emissions you've not put into the atmosphere and how much energy you've saved so I need you guys to do that and again if there's the address maybe a little bit easier to read um, it's called caregame.org 
And so if you would if you would do that and be ready so that we can kind of talk about that when I get back, that would be awesome. That would be beyond awesome. Maybe Mr. Oberson can write it down for you so that I can move. Caregame.org? Yeah, caregame, C-A-I-R-E, game.org. Okay, I got it. Okay, all right, so my last slide is this one, and it says the goal for the climate conference in temperature. So what is the goal for that? So if you look at what I'm doing, and you look at my fingers, I've got a set of, of numbers up. So what do I'm going to I'm going to flip off the PowerPoint in just a second but I want you to tell me what degree that is that I'm flipping up on my fingers and why that is important. Okay? So you ready? Okay. So what's the number that I had up? Anybody want to take a guess? You guys are not this quiet. I know you're not. <laughs> Don't fake it. Okay, I heard 6. I had one. Well, I had one little pinky, and I had a five, and then I'm I had. Showing my, them on I had my head in the middle. One point one point five. five. Awesome. So what? What is the importance of one point five? Anybody know? <laughs> What's the significance of the one point five? Do you guys know what that is? Sorry. Anybody want to take a guess? Mm -hmm. So 1.5, if if we go for the number that the group that's here is trying to negotiate for, which would be 2 degrees Celsius um, change, most of the island nations that you and I will never get to visit will be underwater because things will have melted enough so that sea level will rise so that most of them will be underwater. 1.5 degrees would slow it down enough so that it would be at least maybe manageable. Okay. All right, your turn. I got five minutes. Any questions? Who, who has a question? Is it cold? Is it cold? Is it it's cold. Um, well, let me put it to you this way. Do you see me sitting here with my jacket on? <laughs> it is... Um, it's cold. It's not. It's not. You know, honestly, it's probably not as cold as it should be. Um, it is almost the middle of December, and it's no colder. It's no colder than North Carolina. Okay. Any more questions? <laughs> he wants to know if you have heaters in your hotel. Um, I'm actually not in a hotel. I'm in what's called a hostel. So um, yes, I do have heaters. We do have heaters here, but my roommate, I'm in a room with six other people, and um, my roommates like to have fresh air, so the windows are open. <laughs> so, yeah, it's really cold. He <laughs> says, wow. What, uh, what is your favorite uh, thing that you've heard at the COP so far? What's my the favorite, favorite thing that I've moment? heard? Um, I would have to say that I think that my favorite thing that I've heard is hope, the word hope, um, and the fact that it's not all, you know, it's not it's not super rosy, it's not super, yeah, this is going to be the end all solution to everything, but at least people are talking and at least people are trying to come up with an agreement. Um, so I, I think the word that's kind of the buzzword going around is hope. Anybody Austin, you got a question, man? I can see you sitting there. I can see the, the wheels turning in your head. No. They want to know what you're going to be doing uh, later today, tomorrow, the rest of the week. Well, right now it is um, 8 o'clock at night. So I will probably go downstairs and I'll get a latte. <laughs> And uh, then I have to I have to go back and oh wait uh, well no I have I have a couple of really awesome surprises for you guys when I get back and I mean killerly big awesome surprises so um, I'll probably go back and, and put together some of the stuff that I want to bring back Trevor I saw your hand up yeah is the food better there Ethan wanted me to ask is the food better than in the United States yeah um, well so. Breakfast usually is uh, a baguette, which is French bread, 
and some cheese and some ham and some fruit and uh, coffee. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, if you if you wander out to some of the little bakeries and stuff, yes, it's amazing. It's it's phenomenal. Anybody else? I have a question. Is this the one and a half degree change? Yes. They think that's going to happen. What time span? In the next twenty, thirty years, or? Um, they're hoping for the change with yeah within that time frame, and and it, but you know that's kind of. That's kind of a, I, I hesitate to say stopgap, but it's almost a stopgap. They're really looking for, you know, if we can get it to one and a half, well, let's shoot in the next 10 years. You know, if we can agree to one and a half um, within the next, you know, 20 years, well, let's let's ramp it up. Let's ratchet. I think the expression, the expression that everybody's using is, well, let's ratchet it up and let's make it one, you know. So the countries are going to have to participate in reducing their use of carbon fuels and things like that. They have to reduce the use of carbon fuels, anything that what yeah. things are they going to be able to, the, are we going to have to limit or cut out to be able to help for, with that? For us, as far as the United States, um, yeah, it's, it's the, the thrust is to a much more renewable economy. Um, I've actually picked up a couple of really interesting things that I'm going to bring back and show you guys as far as what, what some of the businesses are doing. Um, because businesses are still have to make money, and so you know if this agreement goes through, you still have to make a living, and you still have to do all of the things that everybody wants to do, and nobody wants to give up everything. But yeah, we're going to have to start looking at things like, um, and and I, I apologize because it, it is it is kind of late. I want to say within the next was it 20 years they were talking about. I want to say that it was in the within the next 20 or 25 years all cars would have to have mileage numbers at 50 miles a gallon or more. I mean, it, you know, they're, they're going to make some radical changes when it comes to some of the things that we're going to be expected to do. Did anything scare you that you found out about climate change? Did anything scare me? Um, yeah, I think, you know, I mean, I always, I always thought that I was a pretty intelligent person and I sort of knew what was going on, but yeah, this is this is something that's snow no pun intended, um, but this is something that's snowballing really fast. And I mean, it, it and it's almost to the point now where it's it's a make or break situation. You know, we either do something now, or you might not have that opportunity later. All right, time yeah for one more question. If you guys have any, any else? Last question. Can we bring you back? Can't oh, we? Won't back. <laughs> oh, listen, I'm I'm excited about coming back. <laughs> Nobody else. Seriously. Okay. All righty. All right. Well, thank you so much. And so the website um, for the game. The website for the game. The website for the game is C A I R E. G A M E dot org. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. All right. All right, you guys. Thank you. Hey, thanks for joining, everybody.